Hello friends, welcome to this investment banking tutorial from Wall Street Mojo. Now that we know exactly what investment banking is, let's now quickly browse through the other departments and their workings within an investment bank. The first and foremost behind everything is the equity research department. And when we talk about research, the primary job is to come up with the buy and a sell recommendation on the stock from a long term perspective. And the idea here is that they should be able to advise their clients on whether they should buy the stock or sell the stock from the stock market. So the first question, what we'll actually try and answer here is what exactly is equity research? When we talk about research, it all starts by conducting a fundamental analysis like, you know, doing ratio analysis, uh, doing a lot of valuations, including free cash flow the firm and also applying relative valuation techniques. So what exactly is research and how do they actually help make money for an investment bank? That's the second question we'll try and answer here. Before that, we must first understand for whose consumption are we conducting this research? I mean, they're basically clients and one of the largest set of clients are the asset management companies or the AMCs. So we'll try and understand what AMCs are all about. And uh, when we talk about equity research on one side and the AMCs and uh, institutional investors or clients on the other side, the former, that is the equity research becomes a sell side and the other one becomes the buy side. So as a newcomer to investment banking, you must understand the differences between a buy side and a sell side. But before that, let's first and foremost start with an understanding of what equity research is. Let us now look at the overall workings of a brokerage or a research department. Well, the equity research department performs stock research, right? And uh, stock research basically means that they look into the fundamentals of the company, going through the annual reports, identifying, uh, you know, whether the company is uh, good or bad from fundamental point of view, looking at the future and coming up with the buy and sell recommendation on the stock. So essentially, we are saying that the research department does the valuation analysis on the company and recommends the purchase or the sale of the stock. So these stock recommendations are being done for various kinds of clients, including the pension fund managers, portfolio managers, retail investors, and once they're convinced with it, the clients will actually give orders to execute the buy or a sell through the sales and trading department. Which brings us to yet another important division of an investment bank, the sales and trading department. The function of which we'll actually learn in a minute. But before that, let me ask you a simple question. Who are the clients? So as we understood that the clients could be pension fund managers or portfolio managers, but the clients can take different forms, different names altogether and exist in different kinds. Think about clients who come from background of being an individual. Say uh, they don't represent an organization. Let's say it's uh, you and me. I may want to invest in Microsoft stock. So I'm an individual investor, right? So essentially I have money and I may want to invest small amounts of money through my account. This is one class of investor. These are called as the retail investors or the individual investors. But Please note here that uh, when we talk about investment banks providing its research services, we are uh, talking about guys who are major investors like the high net worth individuals or the HNWIs who have millions and millions in the bank account and who would like to have some professional on the board to manage it, right? But how about institutional investors? So what do we understand by institutional investors? Think about uh, institutions like the mutual fund. A mutual fund is nothing but a fund or a portfolio created by public through an organization. So these pool of funds are then invested in a certain mandate as defined in the investment policy of the mutual fund. Likewise, institutional investors could be large companies having large amount of cash on the balance sheet. Other examples can be insurance companies, pension funds, hedge funds, etc. So when we talk about investment banks, Investment banking's equity research department typically caters to the needs of the institutional investors. They may not cater to the needs of uh, you and me, that is the individual investors. So let me give you a brief about, uh, you know, how a financial model looks like and what is the actual job of an equity research analyst within a research firm. 
So the research department's primary job is to prepare financial models where they analyze the historicals of the company and see their margins and analyze the fundamentals. They also forecast and come up with the forecasted numbers for the income statement, balance sheets as well as cash flows. And if you look at their forecasting techniques, these are very professional techniques and it takes a lot of time for someone to build these kind of models. And at the end of the day, there's one single objective that is to come up with the share price of the stock, which is the fundamental price or the fair price. So depending on the share price that comes using these valuation models, research analyst recommends the final target price. And thereafter, they prepare the research reports for the clients. With this understanding of research, let us now move forward and look at how do they really make money. When we talk about an investment bank, we know that there is an equity research department and then we also have the sales and trading department. Though there are different other departments as well, but the one which we are exploring here as of now are the two, research and sales and trading. Now the question here is, how does equity research make money? The research professionals are the ones who give buy and sell recommendation to the clients like the institutional investors, right? Now, what these guys in the research side are doing is uh, they are basically preparing recommendations in the form of reports and uh, they're advising clients on whether they should buy or sell, right? So as my question was that how do they make money? Do you foresee a possibility that these reports come at a price tag or... Uh, you know, let's say $100 per report or $200 per report and they sell it directly to the clients. Is that the case? Or do you think that the earning channel from these clients is slightly different? If we assume that these reports are actually paid for, then we would be assuming wrong. These reports are not paid reports. In fact, in most cases, these are given for free. So giving these reports which are prepared after doing some deep analysis, referring to a lot of databases, spending time, it definitely involves money, right? But the investment banks are eventually giving it for free. So how does this whole process works for an investment bank and makes them money? Let's see how. Let's say if you are a technology analyst and let's assume you are covering a stock called Microsoft. And for that, you have given a buy recommendation. Now that you are in a discussion with uh, one of the clients like the mutual funds, and if this mutual fund is convinced with your story about how and why Microsoft is a buy, it will be excited to buy this stock, right? So maybe one reason is that uh, the things or the elements that you have looked at in terms of research were overlooked by the other research houses. And now this mutual fund is kind of convinced that this is a very strong buy. So what will they do essentially? They want to own the stock now. Ultimately, let's say they want to buy Microsoft shares worth $10 million. So how will these trade orders get executed? Here it is $10 million or maybe 20 million, 30 million or maybe 100 million. So this mutual fund, do you think they will go in the open market and find sellers of uh, Microsoft shares? No, they will not do that. They will instead approach the same investment bank to execute the trade for them. So the execution responsibility again lies with this brokerage firm. But the research guys, right, they do not have the skills to execute the trade. And that's where the entity called as the sales and trading comes into picture. So here it is, the sales and trading department, which we will again discuss in a bit more detail. But for the time being, let's assume that there's a trade worth $10 to be executed for this mutual fund. It will be done through this sales and trading department. And on this, basically the brokerage house of the investment bank will charge commissions, right? So let's assume 1% or 2% is its fees. So now this is how equity research guys are actually making money for the investment bank. And this is why the sales and trading guys are needed to execute this trade. So we'll discuss all of that in our upcoming video tutorials, so stay tuned. Include today's discussion, a big thank you to everyone who tuned in from the Wall Street Mojo team. But hold on, 
the financial adventure continues. The next episode unfolds on Tuesday and we're super excited about what's in store. Make sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on the financial insights coming your way. Until next time, this is the Wall Street Mojo team signing off. Stay informed, stay engaged, and stay Wall Street Mojo awesome.